All right. So what can we say about object number one? What can you say about object number one? Starts at zero. Starts at zero, okay. Goes in a positive direction. Okay, I got better. I'm going to erase the starts at zero part. Okay. So, it's moving in a positive direction, right? So that means its velocity is positive. Okay, so we have positive velocity, right? What else can we say? Okay, it has a negative acceleration. So positive velocity and negative acceleration. What's happening to the speed of this object? It has a decreasing speed, right? Okay. So speed is going down, right? What else can we say? Which way is it moving? Positive direction, right? It's going in the positive direction. Does that make sense for object one? Yeah. What about object number two? What can we say about object number two? Okay. So number two has a what? Positive. I know you did, but go back through it slowly. Yep. No, what you said. No, I know. Oh, come on. Come on, bro. Okay, what else do we know about pilot number two since Rex won't share? It starts at oh, wait. It starts, oh, it starts at zero. Okay, they all start at zero, right? Yeah. Okay, what else do we know? It has a positive acceleration. Okay, it has a positive acceleration. velocity and acceleration, right? Yeah. Right? Oh. Positive velocity and acceleration, right? Oh. See, this is confusing. I thought you were going to look like blue. I'm writing in blue. Well, blue is two. Speed goes on. Okay. Speed goes up. So, we're moving in the positive direction, right? Yeah. Right? And the speed does what? Goes up. Speed goes up. Michael, I know you're trying to make me upset, but. Okay. I know I'm good at doing that. Okay. Reggie. What? How's their acceleration affecting speed? We're talking about two. Oh, speed. You're looking at three, aren't you? Okay. Okay. So now third one, the green one. I'm teaching you to read your graph. It's constant. Okay. So Reggie said there's no acceleration because there's no change in speed, right? So V is constant. Right? A is zero. Right? Does that make sense, guys? Okay. And it goes in the positive direction. It goes in the positive direction. Okay, how do we know A is negative for number one? What's happening to the slope? It's decreasing. The slope is decreasing, right? The slope is becoming less steep, right? So since we're moving in the positive direction, right? My velocity is positive. If my slope is decreasing, that means my speed is getting less, right? So if my speed is getting less, what do I know about velocity and acceleration? No, not inversely related, okay? If my velocity is to the right and I'm slowing down, which way is my acceleration? The other way, right? If we're slowing down, velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. Does that make sense? Okay, does that make sense? So positive velocity, I'm going in the positive direction. Negative acceleration, I'm slowing down. My slope is getting less steep. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? Okay. For this one. Speeding up, right? Slope is becoming more steep. Okay. We're moving in the positive direction. Velocity is positive, so acceleration is positive because we're speeding up. Okay. You can also think about it this way. Acceleration is the change in speed, change in velocity because direction matters, right? It's a change in velocity, correct? Velocity on here is the... What part of this is the velocity? What is it? Slope. Slope. So is my slope changing positively or changing negatively here? Negative. Negative. So that means my velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. Okay? I'm adding more negative to this. All right? I'm taking velocity away. My slope is becoming less steep. All right? And then here, our slope, are we, are we increasing slope or decreasing slope? Increasing. Increasing, right? Same. And since we're going in a positive direction, 
That means we have a positive acceleration. Right. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, Katrina, I'm going to make this even more confusing. Oh. Okay. I'm going to add what? Another line. Yep. I'm going to add this line. I only have these three. That's my bad. Yeah. Then you can't do it. What about that? Call that one number four. So there's a negative velocity yeah. and acceleration. We'll add. Well, thank you. Okay, we'll add this one. Black on our shirt. Okay. This will be number five. Okay, guys. And we'll add this one. And this one is number six. No, he didn't. Okay. Four, six, one. Just for you, Katrina. See, I can't, I can't make dashed lines. So, just make solid lines when you race. Right? Or you can just draw the same picture, just, one, just, just next to it. I have limited board space. You guys have a limited amount of paper. So. Well, technically, there is a limit. Yeah. There is a limit. I do agree. Okay, so do the same thing now, but with four, five, and six. Okay, I, I did it. Okay, you did it one. I made a thing. So, what did no. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate sure it. Sure. Sure. That's not. I know. Rex, Juan, I ask you guys to work on something. Please work on it. That's my What's that? I have no idea, Rex. I focus on physics, I don't focus on the... Because typically they make, they make the inside of the string out of, out of fabric that's more durable. It has a bigger tensile strength, which means it can hold more tension. Then the outside is made of nice looking fabric. I thought you just said you don't know. Nah, I don't like you. I, I just want to get more clear on this. But you said I'm bad at math. What else are you never said? You <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the same thing, but with four, five, and six now. You did a nice job, Caleb. I appreciate that. Do you have some scissors I can use? No. We're doing something else right now, right? Come on. PG. 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 Guys, stop talking, please. Thank you. Well, how do we know what the topic is? How are you doing? Don't worry about that. That would be out of order, Katrina. Oh, I made it 465 just because of you. Alright, what do we know about object 4? Um, it's moving in the negative direction. Okay, it's moving in the negative direction, right? Yeah. So it's going in the negative direction. What else? Negative acceleration. Well, which way is the velocity? Negative. For number four, positive or negative velocity? Negative. Negative velocity. Okay. Now, is the velocity increasing or is the velocity decreasing? Increasing. Increasing, right? Our line is getting more steep. So our speed right here is? Our speed increases, right? So if our speed is increasing, then what has to be true about our acceleration and velocity? They're in the same direction. So do we have a positive acceleration or a negative acceleration? Positive. Negative. We have a negative acceleration. Oh, I okay. right. Okay. Because our acceleration and velocity have to be in the same direction, right, Jameer? If I'm speeding up, acceleration and velocity have to be in the same direction, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. Number five. Which way is number five going? Down. Which way is it going? Negative direction. Negative direction. Okay. Nope, number, that's number six, Katrina. Okay. Sorry for my numbering system. Number five is going in the negative direction, right? Yes. Black dashed line, right? What do we know about velocity? Negative. Now, is this one speeding up or slowing down? Okay, is it speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down, right? 
It's moving less, has less speed at the end, doesn't it? Maybe. Right? So our speed is decreasing. Our speed is decreasing, right, Amani? Yeah. We're going slower when we end it. Right? Yeah. Because remember, speed is the magnitude of our slope. All right, so speed is just the steepness. Our line is becoming less steep, right? Right, Kevin? So that means is our acceleration in the same direction or opposite direction? Opposite. Opposite. So we have a positive acceleration. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay. Now for the next one, for number six, the green one. What do we know about velocity? Okay. Velocity is negative. Okay. And constant. Right. So we have a negative velocity, and it's constant. I don't know how to write this. Look at this. Constant. Negative velocity. And does that make sense, guys? It's through negative velocity. Yep. Oh, that would be an S. Okay. All right. Constant velocity in negative direction. Is that better there, Michael? No, I was, you had it right. I was just okay. Was so constant velocity in negative direction, right? If velocity is constant, what do we know about our, what do we know about our acceleration? No acceleration. No acceleration, right? Acceleration is zero. zero. So, on this graph, right, on this graph, what is the slope? What is the slope measure? What is the slope measure? Velocity. Velocity, right? Slope is velocity, right? On this graph, what is the change in slope measure? Acceleration. Good. So, the objects that are accelerating have non-constant slopes, parabolas, right? Curves, right? The con the ones that are that are constantly or have a constant velocity, right? Are straight lines. Does that make sense? Stop. Okay. What's the equation? What's the general equation? Like if I if I was going to think of an equation for number three or for number six, either of my green lines. What's the equation? No, I'm not looking for velocity. I'm just looking for the equation. So y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah. But in this, what's my y? D. D. What's my m? V. V. What's my x? T. T. What's my b? D naught. D naught. D naught. So that's the equation for straight lines on that graph, right? Right. We figured out the other equation yesterday. D equals one half a t squared plus v naught t plus d naught, right? That's Right? We did that yesterday, didn't we? Right? And that's for parabolas, curved lines. Right? So if I have no acceleration like one and three, or like three and six, then I use the top equation. Okay? Which is essentially the bottom equation where a is zero. Right? If I have accelerations like one, two, four, five, then the, the bottom equation, I could use that to make my graph, couldn't I? Yeah. yeah. Right, Caleb? Okay. Which is what you did. Early, right? That's what you did earlier, right? You make graph this. So does that make sense? <clears throat> Excuse me. Does that make sense? <laughs> Can't talk. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go from this is a D versus T graph, right? So you guys call it a dust graph. Makes it looks like that. Yeah. Ed jokes. Okay. This is a D versus T graph, right? Now I'm going to jump to what's called a V versus T graph. Okay. In a D versus T graph, or a position versus time graph, right? In a position versus time graph, D, position, is the y-axis, right? So in a V versus T graph, what do you think my y-axis is going to be? Uh, what's my y-axis going to be? V. V. What's V? Velocity. Good. So this is my velocity axis, right? And which one's my time axis? The x, so here's t, right? So what's the z? Uh, we're not worried about z in this case. Okay. There's no z. No. All right. So in a v versus t graph, the y-axis, instead of being position, is now velocity. Right? Does that make sense? So this is like an acceleration. Oh, we'll get there. Okay. Thanks for the next point. What's our slope then, Katrina? Acceleration. Okay. So the slope 
instead of being velocity like it was over here, right, the slope is the acceleration, right? So instead of having the equation d equals vt plus d naught, right, my equation is now what? Instead of having this equation, d equals vt plus d naught, d equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus d naught. Oh, I'm sorry. 1 half at squared. So what we got yesterday at the end of class? Is it wrote up there? No, it's not. Can it's you, not right there yet. Can you write it up there? I will later. Okay. So, what's my equation for this graph? Um, isn't it the one you just did a while ago? Okay. Is it the top one? Is it like the top one or the bottom one? Top one. Bottom one. It looks more like the top one. Okay. The equation for the v versus t graph. Basically, I take my my equation for my d versus t graph and I plug in my new dependent variable. Right. My dependent variable is what? V. So I start with V equals, what's my slope on this graph? A. A, my slope is acceleration, right? Time is still the x-axis. And instead of starting at positions, we'll start at velocities. Okay. So, V naught. V naught, or V zero, initial velocity. Right? So this equation will be the equation for all my lines on this graph. Okay, does that make sense, guys? Right, so which question? Please don't not. N-A-U-G-H-T. Nah. Okay. All right, any other questions that are pertinent? All right. Any questions about what we're doing right here? Any questions about what we're doing right here? Okay, let's take this, these lines right here. And let's take them and transfer them to a V versus T graph. No, we don't just take the same lines and redraw them. That won't be right. Okay. But what we've, what we've thought about down here with different accelerations and velocities, that will help us out. Okay? So, object one. Object one. The black line right here. What do we know about object one? What do we know about its velocity? Positive velocity, right? What do we know about its acceleration? Negative acceleration, right? So object one has a positive velocity the whole time, but the acceleration is negative. Object one, does it start with a large velocity or a small velocity? Large. Starts with a large velocity. Right here it has a large velocity, right? Right here it has a almost zero velocity, right? So on this graph, where does object one start? Does it start up here above the, the t-axis or does it start by the t-axis? Above, because it has a large velocity, right? So up here are my large velocities. So object one will start here. And what, what happens to object one as time goes on? Okay. Jose, you did like a curved line. Okay. It's going to be a straight line. Because okay. our acceleration is now the slope. Okay. The acceleration is now the slope, right? So we're assuming that object one had a constant acceleration in the first graph, because now we have a constant slope. Is there going to be curved lines in this graph? There could be curved lines in this graph. If they were curved, that means the, the acceleration would be, nope, nope. If I had a curved line on this graph, the acceleration would be, would it be, would it be constant or changing? Changing. So this right here means a constant, a constant acceleration. Okay. Any questions? Nah. Any questions? No, we can't be done for the day. I got plenty of time. All right. So, object two. Where's object two start on this graph? Um, object two right over here. It starts with a, with a velocity that's close to zero, or maybe even is zero, right? Yeah. Okay. So at time zero, object two has a zero velocity, so it starts right here, right? It goes up. What happens to object two's velocity? It goes up. It increases. It goes like that. That. So this is number two. Not to confuse Katrina. Uh. Okay. This is going to confuse you now because they're, they're going to be all over the place again. Right? So 1 and 2, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Object 3. Straight, straight, line. straight line. Why a straight line, Amani? Because what's constant? Because what's constant? Is it going to go straight up? 
Velocity is constant. No, Good, it'll go straight horizontal. Now, object three's velocity, does it start greater than one or less than one? Less than one. Does it start greater than two or less than two? Greater than two, right? So object three's velocity is somewhere between these two lines, right? So I can start, I mean, we don't know what it is for sure. If I knew the number, we'd pick that spot on the line, but it should be a horizontal line because it has a constant velocity. What is, um, a V versus D graph. Velocity versus time. Okay. Position versus time. D versus D. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions? No? Okay. So let's make some notes on here. Right? If I have a constant velocity, what's my slope? Okay. So constant velocity means I have zero slope, right? So I have a horizontal line. Right? Right? Okay. If I have a positive acceleration, that means I have what type of slope? Positive slope. Right? And if I have a negative acceleration, that means I have a negative slope. And Katrina brought up the idea of a curved line on this graph. If I had a curved line on this graph, that means my slope, my, my acceleration is changing. If I had a curved line in here, that means my acceleration would, be, would not be constant. Okay. Now, I would like you guys to quickly add graph 4, 5, and 6. Quickly oh. add graph 4, 5, and 6. I know I did the easy ones, I know where. Okay. I mean, old Mr. Ranch, take all the easy questions. So, multiply the B is positive. Yep. So this right here, this is positive velocities, right? So where are our negative velocities then? Bottom. So down here is where we have our negative velocities. Wow, I wrote notes down there. No, I I just re just know that my handwriting is sloppy and it's gonna always be sloppy, so I just focus on reading well, my hieroglyphs. Like, that's like how mine is. It's just so annoying. Oh, thank you. I don't think yours is bad. Mine's like I think mine's like. Oh, good. Everything's good. Yeah. Mine's really bad. Yeah. 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 All right. So four, five, and six. I know we're running short on time. I want to. No. What is that next one? We'll get there. Don't worry. So four, five, and six. Where does four start? Does four start with a with a, a large positive, or sorry, a large negative, or almost zero velocity? Almost zero. Almost zero, because it has a almost a horizontal line over there to start, right? So that means four is going to start here and go where? Go down. Go down because the the slope for four is becoming more negative, right? So it has a negative acceleration. Where's number four? Where does five start? Uh, Near the, arrow. The, near the arrow. Okay, near the V, it has a very very large negative velocity start, right? It goes right? towards the T. Okay, it goes up towards the T. Okay, so that's number five. And we know that because five starts with a negative velocity that's has a decreasing speed, right? So that means my V should get closer to zero. Four has an almost zero speed that has, that's increasing, right? So and it's going in the negative direction, so we end up with a more negative V. Right. Now six, what does six look like? It like goes straight across the middle. Yeah. So just a horizontal line. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do the intersections mean on this graph? Where they have the same velocities. So in our position versus time graph, these intersections meant those objects were at the same spot at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. On this graph, these intersections mean they have the same velocity. velocity. So at this moment, 6 and 5 have the same velocity. At this moment, 4 and 5 have the same velocity. Okay? They're going the same direction with the same speed. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, you with me? You with me? Okay. 
Are there any questions about a velocity versus time graph? Okay. Any questions? No. No? Does it make sense how we transfer from one to the other? Okay. The way I figured it out is I think about what's my slope over here. If my slope is constant over here, then I have a zero slope over here, right? So if I have a constant straight line on my D versus T, then I have a zero slope on my V versus T. Does that make sense? Okay. And if I have a changing slope over here, if my slope is increasing over here, so like number two, right, slope is getting more positive, or number five, right, that's an increasing slope, slope's getting more positive, then I have a positive slope over here, two and five, right? If I have a decreasing slope over here, one and four, right, then I have a negative slope over here. Does that make sense? Does it make sense, guys? Any questions? OK. So let's make the jump now to acceleration versus time graph. So what's the difference between acceleration, an, an A versus T, and a V versus T? The y-axis is A, right? Now, we're not going to worry so much about the slope in this case, because in an acceleration versus time, the slope doesn't have a, it's not a quantity that we study a lot. The actual name for it is the jerk, okay? The jerk. No. So like, think, if you think about like when you when you hit the when you hit the gas pedal really hard in your car, your body kind of jerks a little bit, right? That's because your acceleration is changing, okay? You experience that quick jerk motion, okay? Or if you hit the brakes, you kind of fall forward a bit, right? We don't really study that that quantity, okay? Not not just in this physics book. In my whole undergraduate study and my graduate work in physics, we haven't talked much about that, okay? Basically, I just told you everything that I learned about it in my undergraduate and graduate. Why not? Okay. Just because of the quantity doesn't show up a lot in our in our study of, of, of forces or velocities. No, I was just thinking that it's okay. like <clears throat> No, it's a little bit more work involved. Okay. So y-axis is acceleration, right? Right? So that means when I draw my line or when I draw my axes, this is my a-axis and this is still my time axis, right? Right? Now, if I have a if I have a slanted line on here, that means our acceleration is changing, right? Do any of these objects have a changing acceleration? No, no they don't. Okay. Now, some of these objects have no acceleration, right? Which objects have no acceleration? Three and six. So, so their graphs look just like this. Here's three and here's six. Okay. Number three and number six. Because they're going with a constant velocity, <clears throat> so their, their acceleration versus time graph is a horizontal line at zero. Does that make sense? Okay. Now if I look at my V versus T graph, who has a positive acceleration? Uh, number two. Five. Number two and? Four. Five. Two and four. Number five. Two and five have positive accelerations, right? Because they have positive slopes on the V versus T graph? Yes. Right? So where are their graphs on the A versus T graph? Are they above the T-axis or below? Above. Somewhere above. Below. So two and five. I don't know which one has a greater acceleration, so I'm just arbitrarily putting it there. But two and five, because they have positive slopes here, they have acceleration versus time graphs that are above the t-axis. So where do 3 and 6 go? They go under. So 3 goes here. Oh, sorry. Now I'm confused. OK. What are they? 1 and 5. 1 and 4. So here's 4. And here's 1. Okay. So, And why are all the lines horizontal here? Because they don't have a changing acceleration. They all have a constant acceleration. All right, so does that make sense? Yeah. Now, what you guys have just done by going from D versus T to V versus T to A versus T, you have studied the derivatives of a position versus time graph, the first and second derivative. Now, if you're a calculus student, you know what that means. If you're not, that's fine. You can wait until you take calculus physics your freshman year in college. And they can say, hey, I've already done this. All right, any questions? All right, nice job today, guys. Thank you.